The blessed afternoon worship of Ascension Day has come. We are going to study God's Word with the sermon titled, Be My Witnesses in Samaria and to the Ends of the Earth. Today is a day when Jesus ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago. On Ascension Day, the disciples watched Jesus go up to heaven from the Mount of Olives. Before Jesus' ascension, there was one last request that He left on this earth. The disciples witnessed Jesus Christ, who is God, die on the cross, witnessed Him rise from the dead on the third day, and witnessed Him ascend to heaven 40 days later. Since the disciples of Jesus witnessed these things, Jesus left them with His last request. His last request was, Be my witnesses who testify about everything I did on this earth for the salvation of mankind. Then 2,000 years ago, when Jesus Christ left His last request, Be my witnesses to His disciples before ascending from the Mount of Olives was His request only for the people of the apostolic age? No, it was not. In the age of the Father, that is, the age of Jehovah, God already requested of the people, be the witnesses of Jehovah. When we take a look at the prophecy that is written in Matthew chapter 28, God made known to us that there are three different ages for the salvation of mankind, the age of the Father, the age of the Son, and the age of the Holy Spirit. In the age of the Father, God Jehovah said, Be my witnesses. In the age of the Son, God said, Be my witnesses. In this last age, the age of the Holy Spirit, God once again said, Be my witnesses. In each age, God appeared with a different name. In each age, when God appeared as the Savior, He asked His people to be the witnesses who testified to the name of the Savior of that age. Testifying to the name of the Savior in each age is a duty and responsibility that the heavenly children must carry out. People became the witnesses of Jehovah in the age of the Father and of Jesus Christ in the age of the Son. In this last age, the age of the Holy Spirit, God has prophesied to come to this earth as the Spirit and the Bride and save mankind. Therefore, I believe that we ought to carry out the role of the witnesses who testify about the Spirit and the Bride in this age. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they met together, they asked Him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Before Jesus ascended to heaven from the Mount of Olives, the last request he left was, Be my witnesses. God's request to be my witnesses was not made only in the age of the Son in the time of Jesus, but also in the age of the Father in the time of Jehovah. In this age, in the age of the Holy Spirit, God has come with a new name. Then, whose name should we become witnesses of and whom should we testify about? Shouldn't we carry out the role of the witnesses who testify about the new name Christ An Sang Hong and the new Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, who is the Bride of the Spirit? Let's see Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. This message was written in the age of the Father, when Prophet Isaiah was moved by the Holy Spirit. We can confirm through the Bible that people who lived in the age of the Father were chosen as the witnesses who testified about God Jehovah. Then we too must carry out the mission of the witnesses who testify about God who comes in this last age, the age of the Holy Spirit. The age of the Holy Spirit began in 1948 
with the fulfillment of the prophecy concerning the twigs of the fig tree becoming tender and its leaves coming out. Then, as witnesses in this age, whose name should we testify about? What did God say that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18? Didn't He say that they all have their own names? Does this mean that they are all three different entities? No, they are one, but only their names are different. The name of God was Jehovah in the age of the Father and Jesus in the age of the Son. In Revelation chapter 3, it is written that the name of God in the age of the Holy Spirit is the new name. Let's see Revelation chapter 3. Let's read verse 12. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. What does a new Jerusalem have? The Bible says that the new Jerusalem surely has a name. And then, what other name is mentioned after the name of the new Jerusalem? And I will also write on him my new name. When God the Father is explained as a representative figure, we only need to pay attention to my new name, meaning the new name of Jesus Christ. However, when we look at Revelation chapter 3, we must understand that there are two names of God, the name of the New Jerusalem and my new name. Only when we know these names can we go to the Spirit and the Bride, the New Jerusalem, when they are calling us to come to them, right? The name of the New Jerusalem and my new name. Here, my indicates Jesus Christ. Since there is a new name of Jesus, other than the name Jesus, we need to carefully examine when the new name will be used. The name of God in the age of the Father was already written as Jehovah. In the age of the Son, it was written as Jesus. So no one can know the new name in the age of the Holy Spirit until God comes to this earth and proclaims the name of the Holy Spirit. That is why people distort the meaning of the scriptures. My new name mentioned in this verse indicates the new name of Jesus. My new name does not mean that all the saints of God will be given their own new names. I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What about the name of God, which is the New Jerusalem? We must also know it. Also, when we understand clearly what my new name is, which is the new name of Jesus, we will be able to carry out the mission of the witnesses of the name of the Holy Spirit and the name of the Bride, which is the New Jerusalem. Let's read Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride say, The Spirit and the Bride are who we need to focus on. The Bible testifies that there is the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Then, in which age will the name of the Holy Spirit be revealed? In the age of the Holy Spirit. When we read Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, the name of the Holy Spirit was written as My New Name. That is the name of the Savior in the age of the Holy Spirit. Afterwards, the bride appears. What is the bride described as in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12? The New Jerusalem. The bride is also mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 19. When we connect these verses all together, we can understand that the name of the New Jerusalem is the name of the bride. Don't you agree? The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Then, when we see these two prophecies written in Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 22, who are we witnesses of in this age? 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ said, Be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now we are preaching the new name of Jesus Christ 
which is referred to as my new name in Revelation. It does not mean that we do not believe in Jesus. The same Jesus came again to this earth in the name of An Sang Hong in the age of the Holy Spirit. He came alone at His first coming. However, since He must come with the bride at His second coming, God mentioned two names, the name of the New Jerusalem and my new name. Then, let's study a little more about the New Jerusalem and understand whose witnesses we must become in this age in order to fulfill the meaning of this feast, Ascension Day. Let's see Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me, what did the angel show him? The holy city Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. He said, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he showed him Jerusalem. Therefore, what did God say in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12? I will write on him the name of my God, my new name, and the name of the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem surely has a name. Just as the Holy Spirit comes to this earth with a new name of Jesus Christ, the new Jerusalem definitely has a name. Shouldn't we know their names? Therefore, we need to know for sure that we are living in the last age, the age of the Holy Spirit, when Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother come to this earth as the Spirit and the Bride and fulfill the prophecy of saving mankind. We also need to be their witnesses and testify about them, whether people around us listen or not. 2,000 years ago, when Apostle Paul was locked in prison under the charge of believing in Jesus, suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the foundations of the prison. Everybody's chains that were confining them were broken. The jailer was stunned and saw that the prison doors were opened. It seems that the jailer fell asleep while keeping guard. He thought, oh my, all the prisoners must have escaped. In the past, jailers were put to death if prisoners escaped. So, it was a life-threatening situation. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself, but Paul said, don't harm yourself. We are all here. None of us have escaped. Don't worry. Through this great mysterious work of God, the jailer came to realize that Apostle Paul was not an ordinary man, and he asked Paul, What must I do to be saved? Back then, the name of Jesus had not been preached to many people. People viewed Jesus as just the son of a carpenter, and Christianity as a strange religion that believed in a man as God. That is why, as written in Acts chapter 24, people who believed in Jesus were labeled as a Nazarene sect at that time. When the jailer asked Apostle Paul, What must I do to be saved? He replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They were not in a situation where Apostle Paul could open the Bible and show all the scriptures starting from Genesis chapter 1. When we see the records of the Bible about how the jailer received Jesus Christ, was baptized immediately, and was saved together with his household, we need to think, why did God say that He will give His children the name of the New Jerusalem and His new name in this age? Everyone, does a name need to be given if the name is not going to be used? No, it doesn't. Even though you want to call someone, how inconvenient will it be if he or she does not have a name? It is written, there are many gods and many lords, whether in heaven or on earth. When we pray, whose name should we pray in? This is why people end their prayers in the name of Jesus Christ or pray in the name of Jehovah. In this age of the Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Christ An Sang Hom. Isn't it because we should end our prayers in the name of the Savior who listens to our prayers? We definitely need the Savior's name. This is the reason the Bible testifies, I will write on him the name of the new Jerusalem and my new name. Then, whom should we testify about in this last age, the age of the Holy Spirit? The generation who lives in the age 
that began after the fig tree's twigs got tender and its leaves came out must carry out the mission of the witnesses of the new name. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 once again. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. The bride mentioned here is the bride from Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The bride is written as the wife of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 21. Then, naturally, the Spirit is referring to the Lamb. The Lamb and the wife of the Lamb, written in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, are described as the Spirit and the bride in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Now, let us take a look at chapter 22, verse 7 briefly to see what we should do according to this prophecy. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. What does it mean to keep the words of the prophecy? According to the prophecy God has given to us, whom should mankind go to in order to receive eternal life and receive salvation? Even though the book of Revelation was written 2,000 years ago, it was not about what was happening back then. However, it is a prophecy about what will take place in this age. We must absolutely seek the Spirit and the Bride. We can see clearly that the Bride is the wife of the Lamb and that the Spirit is the Lamb. Since the Spirit is the Lamb, who will come a second time, we must know the name of the Lamb and the name of the wife of the Lamb. Isn't that why God said, I will write on him the name of the new Jerusalem and my new name? Then, should we or should we not have a firm faith in the Spirit and the Bride in order to keep in step with the prophecy? We should. These are all the words of God which have been prophesied. If we want to keep in step with these words of the prophecy, shouldn't we have complete faith to believe in the Spirit and the Bride? Let's take a look at a few more verses about the Spirit and the Bride to keep in step with the words of prophecy. Isaiah chapter 62 Chapter 62, verse 6 Here, God is talking about Jerusalem. Who is Jerusalem according to the verses we read earlier? Isn't she the wife of the Lamb, the Bride? She is Jerusalem, the wife of the Lamb, the Bride. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give Him no rest till He establishes Jerusalem and makes her, what will He make Jerusalem? The praise of the earth. The Bible testifies, blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy. Then shouldn't we, the heavenly children, who have been appointed as watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem in this age, carry out the role of the witnesses of the Spirit and the Bride? Therefore, 2,000 years ago, as Jesus was ascending from the Mount of Olives on Ascension Day, he told his disciples to be his witnesses because it was the age of the Son. However, the same Jesus came to this earth again in order to become witnesses of the Savior in this age, the age of the Holy Spirit. Whom must we testify about? We must testify about Christ Ansang Hong, who is Jesus that came to this earth a second time. We must also testify about Heavenly Mother, the Bride of the Spirit, together with Christ Ansang Hong, in order to walk in step with prophecy. When people learn about father and mother, then they can come to father and mother. When the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, we must go to them in order to obey the commandment, right? In the Garden of Eden, God gave the commandment, Do not eat. And 2,000 years ago, God gave the commandment, Eat and drink the Passover bread and wine in Mark's upper room. And in Revelation, the last age, God gave us the commandment, Come to us. 
In obedience to this commandment, we are able to receive the great blessing of coming to father and mother and walk in step with the words of prophecy through this ascension day. In Isaiah chapter 62, we can see that God established Jerusalem for the whole world to praise her. To participate in the fulfillment of this prophecy, God told us to be the watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem and not to be silent. In other words, God wants us to preach Jerusalem diligently and be her witnesses. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Here, your light means the light of Jerusalem, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and His glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. If this is what has been prophesied, what should we do according to this prophecy? We must believe it and participate in it. Verse 8. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me. In the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your sons from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has endowed you with splendor. Let's also see what's prophesied in verse 12. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will, what will happen to it? It will perish. People of ignorance will perish if they do not know the truth of heavenly Jerusalem mother or fear her or know the existence of the name of the new Jerusalem just as it is written. The nation or kingdom that does not serve you will perish. Chapter 60, verse 20. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Does it mean that there will be sorrow in the life of Jerusalem mother, or that there is no such thing as sorrow because she does everything with her power and authority? Her life is full of sorrow as she goes through pain and suffering because of her children, and she is in great distress as her children are slandered and hindered by the people of the world. Since she suffers agony, distress, and pain, the Bible describes her life as your days of sorrow. However, the day when her sorrow will end will surely come. To speed this day, I want to ask all of you to become the children of Jerusalem who understand this prophecy and participate in her sorrow and her joy, since the Bible says that those who keep the words of the prophecy are blessed. Let's see verse 21. Then will all your people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest the mighty nation. I am the Lord, in its time I will do this swiftly. We must follow the sacrificial path of suffering, believing that these words of prophecy will surely be fulfilled. We must let people know that the New Jerusalem has a name. We must also let them know that the New Jerusalem is the Bride of the Lamb. We must let them know that the Jerusalem that is above is free and she is our mother. On this Ascension Day, we need to realize that the Spirit and the Bride, whom we must be witnesses of, are God the Father and God the Mother. There are still many pitiful souls who do not know God. Let us preach the truth of the Passover and Father and Mother to all those souls. By doing so, let us be the heavenly children who proclaim the way of salvation to all people of this world. By this, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.